Russell Westbrook is one of the more polarizing figures in the NBA today. There's a common thought that his woeful shooting percentages kill the Thunder offense, but do they? To answer this, we first need to stop and talk about his passing. Westbrook's one of the very best passers in the league, which is rarely mentioned when his name comes up. He makes just about every pass in the book, starting with his lob mastery. He knows his target is a leaper, so he puts the ball only where he can get it, high and out in front of the rim. He uses ballistic drives to put help defenders back on their heels, which creates these little inconspicuous openings. He anticipates actions, ready to throw early. He starts this motion with Adams well behind the free throw line still. He's got one-handed skip passes into the corner. As the extra defender slides in to help here, Westbrook threads the needle. He can hit cutters too and loves this left-handed slingshot off the bounce, which gives him a hairpin trigger to pull if he sees a little opening. Check out this PhD level pass here. The defender, Kyle Korver, has contact with his man and isn't worried in the slightest, but Westbrook sees his hips facing outward and that's an invitation for a layup pass. There's more too. He's got entry passes. He's got extra passes. Note the ball fake to open the passing lane. And he's as good as anyone at drop down and interior passes in the lane. Again, note how his penetration sends defenders in the wrong direction. And this pass is left in soon to be empty space. Westbrook makes nearly every pass in the book because he tries every pass in the book. Cutter barely separates, Westbrook will try it. Defender moves an inch, Westbrook will try it. High-risk lob window, he'll definitely try that. Some of these are too risky, but the ideas have massive payoffs and force defenders to be perfect when they rarely can be. And so his turnovers are on the high side, which makes him exactly like all the greatest passers of all time, who threw so many touchdowns that the interceptions barely hurt. So the question really isn't about Westbrook's shooting killing the Thunder offense, but instead how his efficiencies reduce the massive value of his shot creation and his passing. He still attacks the rim like a young bulldog, finishing there at a career best 63%, and even at 30, he accelerates like he was launched out of a cannon. And he's powerful enough to take contact and draw fouls. The problem is he's only shooting 65% from the foul line this year, just two years after a career best 85% mark. After seven seasons above 80%, it's like Westbrook suddenly forgot how to shoot. The only thing like it in NBA history happened 57 years ago, when Gene Shu shot 84% over five straight All-Star seasons and then collapsed to 67% in his final two years. Westbrook's shooting just 32% on all two-point shots that don't come at the rim, and 25% on all his three-pointers. It's one of the all-time worst shooting seasons in league history. Remove his field goals at the hoop and he's fourth worst in the league in points per attempt. And because of all this, his overall scoring efficiency is an unsettling eight percentage points below league average. Yet, despite it all, the OKC offense is actually kind of good. They boast a 115 offensive rating with Westbrook on the floor, which is better than Philly with Embiid and Simmons, and about a point behind Houston with Harden and Milwaukee with Giannis. Westbrook's playmaking is just that valuable. He makes OKC competitive on offense, even with those embarrassing shooting numbers. He also has a symbiosis with offensive rebounders like Steven Adams. All of those drives serve to scramble the defense and open up offensive rebounding windows, which has yielded far better team efficiency on his own shots than those shooting percentages would indicate. Over the last three seasons, OKC's offensive rebounding percentage is significantly higher with Westbrook on the court. Russell himself adds to this phenomenon by being the best rebounding guard in the league. All of this non-scoring value shows up in his impact metrics. Metrics that incorporate plus-minus data like RPM and PIPM have him in the top 30 on offense this year, and pure adjusted plus-minus has him right at the top of the league as an offensive force over the last two seasons. But what about his controversial defense? 
He's been maligned in the past for his lackluster effort, and he's still been fairly error prone this year. He can ball watch at times, where he'll lose track of his guy in the perimeter, and he occasionally lags behind screening action as if his work was done there. He's also had some stretches recently where his motor was idling, and there's an arrogance about some of his possessions when he doesn't respect his cover. But much like his offense, there's a lot to offset this. Here he doesn't bother with Tim Frazier's 32% career three-point shooting as a threat, but when Frazier cuts, Westbrook happily baits New Orleans into his lair. Westbrook's known for boomer bust gambles on defense, where the punishment is often an open shot. And he's missed a few this year, no doubt, but he's been far more effective timing these up, and he's arguably the best player in the league right now at jumping passing lanes. That quick burst that serves him on offense helps him track balls quickly too. And all that passing vision helps him anticipate and read plays quite well. He's also the preeminent sniper in the game today that's rushing ball handlers when they turn their backs. And he's been effective on these plays all year. You'll notice he has fabulous hand-eye coordination. Usually if the ball's exposed, he gets a good clean swipe at it. And the end result of all this is that Westbrook is near the top of the league in deflections and steals. His reactions in help situations are quite good too. Here's a play where the lower defender typically rotates into the lane, but Westbrook's so quick, he gets there in time to force a turnover. Check out this play where there's a switch call and Westbrook works to get inside position on his new assignment. That athleticism prevents him from being picked on by bigger players. For instance, he's got this swim move down when defending post entries, and he loves to put bodies on big men and interrupt their rebounding ideas. Speaking of rebounding, his stats are inflated a bit by picking up free boards on free throws. It's really abnormal for guards to grab rebounds on these, and he picks up about one extra board a game this way. But that point aside, he's arguably the best rebounding guard in league history. He's incredibly quick to the ball, and that bounce allows him to compete with big men for boards. And where most smalls will be a liability when matched up against a big, Westbrook is like having an extra big guy defender on the court, banging and competing for rebounds on every possession. He also knows how to target the ball and just steal rebounds as other players try to corral them. His on-ball defense is also quite strong. He's able to keep most penetrators in front of him. And he'll pester players and sometimes just take their lunch in spectacular fashion. Overall, I've been fairly impressed with his defense this year, and defensive metrics paint him as a strong but unspectacular player on that end, which I think is fair. So despite all of his polarizing flaws on both ends of the court, major one-number metrics view him as somewhere between an all-star and an all-NBA player. You know, I think Westbrook is often undersold by the analytics community because of his shooting and turnover numbers, but his passing and creation bring massive value. Where his shooting really concerns me this year is his complete inability to space the floor or threaten defenses without the ball. This can not only be exposed in certain playoff matchups, but it's the type of ball-dominant offense that doesn't mesh with other great players. An unwarranted shot selection and awful shooting put a ceiling on most offenses. So while I don't buy that he's an offense killer, or a middling defender, I can't go all in on him either, and thus view 2019 Russell Westbrook as a borderline all-NBA player. A big thanks to all my patrons for helping me produce these videos. If you like my content and want to help me make more, consider heading on over to patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. Next up, I'm planning on taking a nice long Luca at some rookies, so hope you guys enjoy that, and otherwise, hope you are having a great day.